Am I the a-hole for telling my sister that she is as bad as our father? I, 28 female, have an older sister, 33 female. Our parents divorced when we were 4 and 9. Our mother got full custody because our father was not a good person. Then our father kidnapped us. And from 4 to 16, I lived with her and our father in cult. It was your run-off-the-mill Christian cult. Homeschooled, forced to dress modestly, any type of independence is seen as sinning, etc. But when I was 16, the cops finally arrested him and we were reunited with our mom. The first few years of freedom were wild. We finally got to grow as individuals, experiencing normal life and face our traumas in therapy. My sister became a tattooed, pink-haired career woman. I went to college, worked for a couple of years, met a good man and decided that being a stay-at-home mom is what I really want. Looking at me, you would think that I am embodying what we were taught as kids in a cult. But that's not true. I just find myself in dressing in feminine clothes taking care of my home, my husband, and my kid. I'm an equal in my relationship. I know how to assert myself, and I am as far from what I used to be as my sister is. My sister, on the other hand, doesn't think so. She takes every opportunity we meet to try and save me. She tries to convince me to leave my husband and my kid, pushes me to get a job, tries to force me to go clubbing with her, tried to force me to get makeovers, etc. I finally had enough yesterday. She made a dating profile for me on Tinder. And she has been chatting with a guy and had set a date already. I was furious. So we got into a screaming match that ended up with me telling her, You are exactly like Dad. You are both trying to change me to fit the idea of what you think I should be. She was shocked. Didn't say anything and just left. Her partner told me that she had an anxiety attack and is ramping up her therapy sessions. And now I am feeling like an a-hole. Not an a-hole. What you said is exactly right. She wouldn't listen to you before. Sometimes it takes a verbal slap in the face with the reality to get through to someone. Something that I've learned. The people who visibly rebel the most tend to be the ones who are the most similar to what they're rebelling from. The sister embodies this intensely, given her need for control. I agree. And for this reason, I'm actually gonna go with no a-holes here. OP, first, I'm really glad you're both out of that situation. Even though you and your sister went through it together, it sounds like the experience affected you pretty differently, which makes sense since you're two different people. Based on what her partner told you about your sister's reaction, it sounds like her identity as the rebellious one is actually pretty brittle, sort of like an emotional exoskeleton. What you said to her wouldn't have affected her so much if there hadn't been a kernel of truth to it. It was hard to hear, but the good news is that she was ready to hear it, I know that because she heard it. If she wasn't ready for it, she would have shut down instantly by lashing out at you, doubling down on a party girl thing, etc. She'd probably have quit therapy too, but that's not what she did. She heard what you said and recognized the truth of it, and she's dealing with it in an appropriate way. It would probably be good to let her know you love her and that you're there for her, but also to give her some space and follow her lead for a bit. I know this is upsetting, but it also sounds pretty healthy. I think you're both gonna be okay. The moment you start pretending to be someone else online, you become the a-hole. Opie's married. If her husband or anyone who knew her saw that Tinder account, she'd be receiving the heat of it, not the sister. Sister is an equal victim of the cult, but Opie didn't steal her identity online. That tips it to not the a-hole for me. She needed to hear the truth, Opie. Ramping up her therapy sessions is the best thing you can do right now. All the women I know in harmful relationships have careers. She needs to learn that's not a way to measure freedom. Definitely not the whole. It sounds like you are happy and secure in being who you want to be. It's not your fault that she can't see or accept that. It almost feels like she's overcompensating for the lifestyle you had growing up, while you've found your middle ground. For her to create a tender profile for her happily married sister, and even chat up guys as you, is wrong on so many levels and crosses so many lines that I can't even find a proper word for my disgust. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not treating my stepkids equally? I started dating Daniel two and a half years ago and we got married last year. Daniel has five kids with his ex-wife. Ava, 11, Jason, 9, Isabella, 6, Sophia, 5, and Andrew, 3. Daniel's ex never liked Ava. She blames Ava for leaving her trapped in a relationship with her dad. When they got divorced, she said she didn't want anything to do with Ava. She was 8 years old at a time. Ava's mom leaving but having a relationship with her siblings destroyed her. 
She had to go to the hospital three times over the first four months. She didn't sleep nor eat and would have panic attacks at school. The weeks Ava's siblings were with her mom were the hardest, because it was a constant reminder that her mom loved her siblings and not her. She would barely get out of bed those weeks. So around two years ago, I surprised her with a day trip to the beach. I bought her a cute swimsuit, we got ice cream, we went boogie boarding, went out to eat and went shopping. It was the first time I'd seen her smile in weeks. I noticed it was helping Ava, so we started to go out more and more. When her siblings are here, it's something small like dinner before therapy, but when they're not here, we go camping, we go hiking, we try new restaurants, we go back to the beach, etc., and she loves it. I don't spend nearly as much one-on-one -on -one time with the other four kids for two reasons. These kids already have a mom that loves them and they don't need it as much. It is so much easier to do anything with one kid than five. When I spend time with Ava, I stick her in my Honda and we go. When I have all five kids, we take a big passenger van and they fight over everything. It takes twice as long to go somewhere because I keep having to pull over and break up a fight. I do take all five kids out one to two times a week when they're with us, but it's not usually a big trip like what I go on with Ava. We'll go to the beach 20 minutes away instead of the one almost two hours away. We'll go on the walking trail by our house instead of a four-mile hike. Sometimes we have picnics in the park. The big thing this summer is the amusement park. I'll take all of the kids with their dad or their nanny. We go on some rides together, then one of us will take the older two to go on all of the scary rides they want, while the other takes the younger three to the kiddie rides that the older two are way too big and mature to go near. Then we meet up at a water park. We've done this at least once a week this summer. Recently, my husband asked me to start taking the younger four on day trips, like the kind Ava and I go on because they're starting to get jealous. I said I'll try to plan more fun activities, but my trips with Ava aren't suitable for all five kids. He said I should try to treat the kids equally and either not take Ava or take everybody. I said I will, when he takes all five kids camping or on a four-mile hike by himself. He called me a bad stepmom, so I wanted to know if I was the a-hole. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Why doesn't their father do as much for his kids as you do? I think, given the circumstances, you're not doing anything wrong here, aside from the misleading title. Their dad works a lot and travels a lot for work. They are his responsibility and he should make time to be with them. He knows that his ex is emotionally harming Ava and you are supporting Ava, but he is demanding that you stop? He is not being a good father. He said I should try to treat the kids equally and either not take Ava or take everybody. This, the kids aren't equal and the other four have a mother. Ava only has you. Crazily enough, you got yourself in the position where you're Ava's adoptive mom and stepmom to the others. In fact, even though it make the issues worse, I might suggest you look into legally adopting Ava. That way you have rights to her if you and your husband don't work out. Not today, Holopi. Your husband is callous and ridiculous. You need to have a serious talk one-on-one -on -one with the others. See if you can nip this complaining in the bud, if he's telling the truth. And this isn't originating with the ex as another way to destroy Ava. Not today, Ho. That poor little girl. You may not have come up with a perfect solution for helping this child, and it may be unfair to her siblings, but you are putting a hurting child first. She's lucky to have you. I agree with not the a but if anything Opie does is unfair, it is caused by the unfair behavior of the biological mother. Trying to help and balancing out an unfair situation should not be called out as unfair. That would be excusing the root problem. Next story. Am I the a-hole for forcing my ex to cancel his business trip so he can watch our son after his girlfriend caused our nanny to quit? I had a nanny, Cora, who worked for both myself and my ex. While my ex paid her, he left most of the decisions about her employment and how she would care for our son to me. Cora asked me if it would be okay if she could bring her niece with her to work while she cares for my son, as her sister was in the hospital. Her niece and my son are both close in age, so I thought it would be nice for him to have a child to play with. And Cora has honestly been a lifesaver for the two years she's worked for us. Things were great, until Cora called me to tell me she was quitting. After my ex's girlfriend told her she couldn't bring her niece into his house, even after Cora had told her I had said it was fine. I tried to convince Cora not to quit, but she said girlfriend spoke to her so rudely that she couldn't continue working for us. When I called my ex, he agreed his girlfriend was in the wrong but thought this would just mean I would stay home to care for our son and he would take care of us financially again. 
I told him he needed to cancel his business trip next week because our son is supposed to be with him from Thursday to Sunday. He told me he couldn't just cancel as the trip was important. But I was annoyed, so I told him that was too bad. And it was a good thing he was his own boss then because he had to watch our son on his days and he couldn't do that from the US. Now he's upset with me and his sister told me he broke up with his girlfriend in front of everybody because he was angry after our conversation. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. His childcare was lost due to his girlfriend and he is responsible for finding backup childcare during his parenting time. Most parents have to schedule their business travel when their children aren't with them if they don't have alternative care. So, he needs to parent. He didn't have good boundaries with his girlfriend about her minding her manners with the important childcare provider he employs. And now he has consequences. I hope you can give the nanny a good reference for her next role. She did not deserve mistreatment. Hopefully you find an excellent new nanny shortly as well. I will also add that his girlfriend was probably of the eye candy category and not someone he really cared about. Plus, how entitled can the guy be? The nanny quit. So my ex will quit her job and take care of the kid? My friend broke up with her narcissist ex, and every single inconvenience he experiences in his life is her problem to fix. He got a flat tire while transporting their infant and toddler. He called her to leave work to pick the kids up because he needed to go to the tire shop. Never mind normal custody handoff would be the following morning. He needed her to take over parenting because he couldn't plan a better time to get his tire fixed. That did not interfere with bedtime. Her work doesn't matter to him. Her family issues don't matter to him. Since their toddler was born, she lost two close family members in tragic, unexpected and untimely circumstances. And both times, she was in crisis. He returned to kids early or skipped parenting time, when you know damn well she needed a minute to grieve without babies. These people feel like we're all here to make their lives easier. Not that they have responsibility for contributing to their relationships. His girlfriend created a problem. And he expected you to give up your life because he doesn't want to be inconvenienced by his girlfriend's actions? My question is, why won't Cora come back if the girlfriend is no longer in the picture? Is there more to Cora leaving? Because when you have worked for a family for years in an intimate situation like Inani does, you do have a breaking point. I'm going to guess the girlfriend was not treating Cora very well in general. That this was discussed with the father multiple times and he ignored the situation until it got to this point. Even if the girlfriend is gone, the father was disrespecting Cora by even putting her in this situation and she got fed up. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not giving my nephew his birthday gift? Just bear with me for a moment. My 29 female nephew, Josh, 12 male, is quite spoiled. His parents, my brother and sister-in-law, show blatant favoritism towards him over his younger sister, Lou, 9 female. As a result, sadly, Josh has grown a little entitled. He also is quite mean to his younger sister, because his parents never believe her when she tells him what is done to her stuff. Now, I'm usually very strict, and when the kids are with me for a weekend, Josh is usually on his best behavior. Now, Josh's birthday was yesterday. Lou had a spelling bee last week, and she got first prize. Her parents brushed it off, but I was very happy for her because she spent hours learning each word, and I was very proud. So when I took the kid's day before Josh's birthday, so he could pick out a gift for his birthday, I got Louis stuffed animal as a you did great, while Josh picked this game that he's been wanting. The birthday party was yesterday, and when I went to their house, Lou had been grounded and was not allowed to attend, and the two friends she had invited were also sent back home. I thought it was extreme and asked what she had done. Turns out that Josh and her argued over the TV remote. And Josh went to her room and destroyed her stuffed animal that I gave her and told her she didn't deserve it. Lou screamed at him and my brother got angry with her tamper tantrum and had her pick up the pieces of the stuffed animal and throw them in the trash. All the while she cried. She was then grounded. By the way, Josh's best friend was the one who spilled beans to me. It also told me that Josh goaded his parents into the punishment. I was furious and refused to give Josh's birthday present, telling him he didn't deserve it for being mean to his sister. I also told off my sister-in-law and brother that they're growing insanely cruel towards their young daughter. Now, my family is angry that I refused to give Josh's birthday gift. So, am I the a-hole? Now, for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Make sure you let her know that she has family that does love her and cares about her, because she is likely to need that support as she grows. Be ready to be put at a distance and ready to support her when you can. I'd start to document everything and ask about guardian rights for Lou. Poor thing being so neglected. 
I'd have a talk with brother and sister-in-law over this favoritism. And if it doesn't stop, then not only will they lose their relationship with their daughter, but also consider talking to a lawyer about gaining rights for her, as she is being neglected and the punishment she's enduring. Keep an open channel with her so she knows she's got someone on her side. Not Deho. His parents are just the worst. They are, and they are making a monster. Well done for speaking up. Awful parents. Offer to adopt her if you can as they are negligent. I hope you're around when she's a teenager and needs somewhere to live when they find an excuse to kick her out. I come from a family where sons are preferred over daughters. When my sister-in-law found out she was expecting a girl, she wanted to get rid of her but she was too far along. I did offer to adopt her multiple times but they have an image to maintain and they refused to let me. My parents were the same with me. Wait, what? How? Can I ask what culture you come from? And why boys are valued so highly that your sister-in-law considered aborting her daughter? I'm extremely curious because I've never heard anything like that before. I'm South Asian but we live in the West. I don't want to share too much because sister-in-law is very active on this thread. Good. I hope she reads these comments. She's a terrible